Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and I love doing DIY, making clothes in a seemly but pretty way. Today's video is the third episode of my perfect wedding series. I'm going to share with you how I make the primary dress for my wedding. I chose a drab dress for this DIY because it can be adjustable for the different body types and it's also not too difficult to make. In the beginning, I plan to have only one design for all of my brides. However, my brides have a different styles, and their body actually is not really suitable for one design. So I make it into two designs. They aren't the same at the skirt part and just different at the bodice. The sleeveless design for two girls who are quite small and skinny. The butterfly sleeve for two other girls who are a bit bigger and they are not really confident with their arms so they want to hide them. To be honest, it took a bit of my time to finish four dresses for one of my primates. But look at how beautiful they are and imagine my beautiful primates in them make one of my work hard become totally worthy. So I hope you will like it and check it out. And let's get started! The first primates dress is the butterfly sleeve wrap dress. To make the pattern for this dress, I draw a straight line cutting the horizontal line first. After that, I draw another straight line at 2.5cm outside the first one. This new straight line will cut the horizontal line at one point. From this cutting point, I mark up 8cm on the second straight line. It's the half of the neck that I want. Then connect this mark to the cutting point between the horizontal line and the first straight line. From this mark, I also draw a perpendicular line that cuts the first straight line at one point. From this cutting point, I connect it to the middle of the slanted line I made before that. Then I draw a curved line from the first mark to the middle of this line to the first cutting point to finish the neckline of the basic pattern. From the second cutting point, I mark up 16cm, which is a half of my shoulder side. From this mark, I draw a perpendicular line with 3.2cm, which is 1 by 10 my shoulder side. Then connect the end of this line to the end of the neckline to finish the shoulder line of the pattern. From the second straight line, I draw another straight line at 20.5cm from it. It's a quarter of my bust side, and it's also the position for the end of the ambic line. From the cutting point between this line and the horizontal line, I mark up 21cm, which is a quarter of my bust side plus a half cm. I continue the perpendicular line from the shoulder to this line. On the perpendicular line I made before that, I mark at 1 by 3 of this line first, then connect it to the mask on the bust line I just made before that. After that, I make the curved line in the similar way that I did at the neck line to create the sleeve line for the pattern. From the second straight line, I make another one at 40cm from it. It's the length from the shoulder to 3cm above the belly button. From the cutting point between this line and the horizontal line, I mark up 20cm, which is a quarter of my waist side plus 4cm. Then connect this mark to the end of the sleeve line to create the side line of the pattern. At the ending line, which is the waist line, I mark in the middle foot. Then I draw a horizontal line that is parallel with the middle line of the pattern. This line will cut the bust line at one point. From the mask on the waist line, I make two more masks at 2cm outside of it. So the width between two masks will be 4cm, which is the extra 4cm on the waist line just made before. It means the leftover width of the waist line will be 16cm, which is a quarter of my waist line. Add in 1cm for seam allowance before cutting, except the middle line. And we will have the back pattern of the top bodice after that. Remember to cut it in full fabric. I use the back pattern to create the front pattern of the top dress. On the waistline, I continue it outside of the middle line. The width of the new waistline will be 29cm, which is the half of my waistline, minus 3cm. Then I connect one end of the waistline to the top of the neckline to create the new neckline of the front dress. 
to create the dash at the bus area of the front pattern. I mark it 8 cm under the ambit line, then connect it to the middle of the bus line. From this mark, I make two other marks at 1.5 cm outside of it. Then connect these two marks to the marks at 2 cm under the other end of the dash line. Because I have 3 cm extra for the dash on the side line, so I increase the side line 3 cm at the end to make it the same as the side line at the back pattern. Because of that, I redraw the ending line of the front pattern. Adding 1 cm for seam allowance after that, and we will have the front pattern of the top bodice after cutting. To make the sleeve pattern, I measure the total width of the sleeve line at the front and the back pattern foot. After that, I use the fold paper to make the sleeve pattern. From one end of the folding line, I draw a curved line at 30 cm from it. It's the length of the sleeve from the shoulder to my elbow plus 2 cm for seam allowance. It's the length of the sleeve that I want. From one end of the fold line, I mark down 20.5 cm which is a quarter of my bust side. Then drawing a curved line to create a sleeve line of the sleeve. Make sure the length of this line will be a half of the total width of the sleeve at the front and the back pattern you checked before, plus 1 cm for seam allowance. From one end of the ending line, I mark up 5 cm. Then redraw the curved line to finish the ending line. By doing this way, the sleeve will look a bit longer at the outside compared to the underarm big. And here's the sleeve pattern after cutting. To make the skirt pattern, I fold the edge of the paper to connect the length line and the width line of the paper together first. As I don't want the skirt is too big, I make it smaller by drawing a straight line from the top of the folding line with a 15 degrees angle. The bigger the tree you use, the bigger skirt will be. After that, I draw a curved line based on the top of the folding paper. The width of this curved line will be a half of my waist side. It's also the same with the width at the end of the back bodice. From this curved line, I keep drawing another one 90 cm away from it. It's the length of the skirt part from the belly button to over the ankle. Add in 1 cm for seam allowance after that, and we will have the back pattern of the skirt part after cutting. To make the front pattern of the skirt, I draw a 30 degree angle from the width line of the paper. After that, I draw a curved line with 29 cm, which is a half of my waist side minus 3 cm. It's also the same with the width at the end of the front bodice. From this curved line, I keep drawing another one 90 cm away from it. It's the length of the skirt from the belly button to over the ankle. Adding 1 cm for seam allowance after that, and we will have the front pattern of the skirt part after cutting. Now, let's start making this thread. I use 3 meters of each type of fabric for this thread. The floral organza fabric for the outside and white satin fabric for the inside. Apply on the pattern to the fabric and cutting. After cutting, I copy the dart from the pattern to the fabric as well. Then I sew the dart at the front and the back of the fabric before connecting them together at the shoulder. Doing the same for the satin fabric.
then I connect the organza fabric and the starting fabric together at the neckline and sewing. After that, I turn the starting fabric over the organza fabric to hide on the seam inside, then making the under stitching seam on the starting fabric. Now I'm connecting the rest of the top part of the organza in the starting together and sewing. Moving to the sleeve, I connect two under ambic lines together first. Then I finish the end of the sleeve by folding the end of the fabric inside two times with a half centimeter each time. After that, I connect the sleeve to the top part of the dress at the sleeve lines, and we finish the top part of the dress. Moving to the skirt part of the dress, I connect two pieces of the front skirt to the back skirt at two side line and sewing. Doing the same for the starting fabric part. Then I connect the organza fabric of the skirt part to the top part of the dress first. Remember to keep around 1cm extra at two sides of the waistline of the skirt. After that, I will connect the starting fabric part to there later. Make sure the top part will be in the middle between two pieces of the skirt part and the second seam should be over the first seam. To make the tie for the dress, I cut two long fabric lines with 3cm width and around 64cm length, which is my waist size. I fold two length lines of the fabric together and sew to create a tie. Remember to make the seam close to the edge of the fabric and the width of the tie should be bigger than 1cm.
up the upside the tie. Use the iron to keep the seam stay and make the tie look nicer. You will need to make two ties for this dress. I add one end of the tie to the end of the waistline between two pieces of the skirt part and sewing. After that, I finished the side line of the front skirt by folding the end fabric inside two times with a half centimeter each time and sewing. Doing separately for the organza fabric and the satin fabric. I also do the same to finish the ending of the skirt part which is the end of the dress. The last step is making a small hole at one side of the dress, right at the top of the skirt part, so one tie can go through it and you can glow the dress when wearing. Don't forget to re-sew the top of the seam after creating that hole to permanent it there. The neck primary dress is a sleeveless draft dress. I use the pattern from the butterfly sleeve draft dress to make the pattern for this dress. With the front bodice, I mark in the middle of the shoulder line foot. After that, I draw a 5cm perpendicular line from that mark. From the end of this perpendicular line, I redraw the sleeve line and the neck line, and we will have the front bodice pattern after cutting. For the back bodice, I draw a horizontal line from the end of the sleeve line on the back pattern to parallel with the ending line and we will have the back bodice pattern after cutting. The skirt pattern of this dress will be the same with the skirt pattern of the butterfly sleeve draft dress. Now let's start making this dress. Here is the front bodice piece of the dress. I copy the dot line to the fabric and sew to finish it. I do the same for the back bodice piece. After that, I connect the front and the back bodice together at two side line and sewing. Doing the same for the satin fabric. Now I'm connecting the satin fabric and the organza fabric together at the neckline and the backline by the being first. Before sewing, I make the strap for the bodice in the similar way I did for the butterfly sleeve before. You will need two long strap and two short strap. I add the long strap to the top of the front bodice. I fold the short strap in half after adding the circle ring, then add it to the top of the dash at the back bodice, and sewing them on together. After sewing, turn the satin fabric inside out then making an under-stitching seam to keep on the end fabric to one side. I 
I connect the ending line of the starting fabric and the organza fabric together. To finish the bodice, I connect the long strap to the short strap. For the skirt part of this dress, it's the same with the butterfly sleeve drap dress. And I finished this DIY. Here's my final result. These dress are super pretty, especially when I see them in my beautiful bright mess. I hope you like it and check it out. See you next week.